I speak for a living. That means that about 50 times a year, I travel around the world and give speeches at companies like Microsoft, Nissan, and Comedy Central. If you want more information about booking me for an event, there's a link in the description. Whenever I ask people what sort of public speaking advice they'd like to hear about, the number one request is nerves. Or more specifically, the number one request is how not to puke at the mere thought of public speaking. Now that's a pretty specific idea and I probably won't directly cover not throwing up in this video today. And if you're already a professional speaker and we're hoping for a tip to double your fee, that'll probably be a video coming in the weeks ahead. But for now, let's get the biggest, hardest idea about public speaking out of the way, the fear. First of all, it's okay to be afraid of public speaking. Most people are. Comedian Jerry Seinfeld has a whole routine about it where he says we're more afraid of public speaking than we are of death. Death is number two? <laughs> this means to the average person, if you have to be at a funeral, you would rather be in the casket than doing the eulogy. So right off the bat, know that you're not alone. I told my wife, Jenny, that since people were more afraid of public speaking than death, in a way, I had the most dangerous job in the world. Take that, Alaskan crab fisherman. Where's my John Bon Jovi wanted dead or alive moment? She didn't, she didn't seem that impressed, though, at that comparison. The second thing you need to know is that you're actually not afraid of public speaking. That's not what you're afraid of at all. How do I know? You speak all day. You do it in meetings and in carpools and on the phone. Since you were a child, you've had a pretty firm grasp on speaking in public. Speaking is not the real issue, actually. What you're afraid of is looking foolish. And unfortunately, public speaking offers a wonderful opportunity for that. Your fear is that you'll be stuck on stage under hot lights while people make fun of how terrible you are. The reason it's so important to know this distinction is then we can fight the real problem. When we're afraid of looking foolish, we sometimes think that people are just waiting for us to mess up. We imagine them on the edge of their seats, ready for us to fail in some spectacular way. But that's not the case at all. On the contrary, people in the audience want us to win. Nobody likes watching a failure unfold, especially a public one on stage. It's excruciating. We all feel so gross watching a train wreck like that. People would much rather laugh and learn and leave refreshed from your speech. I would argue that 99% of the time, the audience is on your side. The minute you step on stage, tell yourself, these people want me to win. They are on my side. That said, there are four ways to beat your fear of public speaking, specific things you can do. Some of them are obvious, but this first one usually surprises people. The first way to beat it is to go out and watch other people give speeches. One of the best places is an open mic night at a comedy club near you. Dozens of the world's best comedians got their start that way. Why? Because you're going to see some people who are terrible. You're going to see the worst comedians you've ever seen. And you know what you'll say in that moment? I can do better than that. Whether it's comedy or corporate speech, you'll see that and go, I'm amazed at how many careers have launched with that phrase. I keep meeting people that say, I can do better than that, and then they go try it. And this is the opposite of what most people teach. Most people say, go watch TED videos. And I think that has value eventually, but it's horrible advice when you're working through the fear. Oh yeah, go watch the best people in the world do the thing that is hard for you. That'll be encouraging. The second way to beat your fear is to practice hard. I'm not talking about doing a lot of paid gigs, which might be impossible at first. I'm talking about getting your speeches down to the point where you feel comfortable. I'll talk about practice in greater detail in other videos, but just know that you need more practice if you want to experience less fear. Those two are connected. More practice, less fear. The third way to beat your fear is to give more speeches. It's like anything else you do. The more you do it, the less you fear it. Repetition forces fear to lose its power over you. The pushback to this idea should be, but I can't get any paying gigs right now. Well, well, who said anything about paying gigs? We're not trying to overcome your fear of not having money. We're trying to overcome your fear of public speaking. Give a speech at a nursing home. Join Toastmasters. Volunteer to read the announcements at your church. If you look hard enough, even in a small town, you can find ways to give speeches and get better. Set your are really, really low and new opportunities will open up that you might have missed previously. The fourth and final way to beat your fear is to simply accept it. What if you'll always be a little afraid and that's okay? What if it's not failure? That's just part of the game. I've given hundreds of speeches over the last few years and there's still moments of nerves for me. It might be a big audience or a new client or a new speech, but there are still times when I feel anxious right before I go on stage. 
I don't let that stop me though. Sometimes instead of beating fear, which has a tinge of perfection to it, you have to learn to live with it and do the thing anyway. Someone famous who I've forgotten, but it was probably Hemingway, once said that you'll always be afraid because that's how you know you're making progress. He said this happens because you keep doing bigger and bigger things. Let's say you get comfortable talking to 100 people. Maybe talking to 1,000 stirs up all that fear again. If you get comfortable talking to 1,000, talking to 2,000 stirs it up all again. As you level up and grow and grow and grow, you've got to learn to live with it. Is public speaking scary? It is, but I think the same thing that makes it scary also makes it really fun. It's a high emotion game. It's packed with possibility. The possibility of looking foolish is what frightens us, but the possibility of winning is what excites us, and both are present at every gig you do. Don't be afraid. We all feel it sometimes, but we all do it anyway, and so can you. Thanks for watching this video today. Hit that bell so you don't miss the next one. Please hit like, and thanks for subscribing to my channel. I'll keep making these if you keep watching them.